Hello, friends. There is strong magic in this place and maybe it will kill me, but I need to tell a story. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. A friend said I could post this here and maybe get some input. At the time I wrote this I was sitting at the local pancake house trying to write it all down, I just didn't want to forget any detail in case they would be important. Yesterday was January 10th 2020, the first full moon of the year, which is called the wolf moon. I googled wolf moon and it did say wolves do howl more at this time, they seem to be hungrier or they could be looking for members of their pack. It's been at least 10 years since I'd gone to Eastern NC to see my dad's brother Richard. After my parents died in a car crash I lost touch with him. My brothers hadn't been to see him either, but they'd married and had kids of their own even before my parents passed away. The last few times we visited him it was just me and my parents. His lawyer called me a little over a month ago to tell me about him passing. He said Uncle Richard didn't suffer and that everything had been taken care of. Then he told me the contents of his will. I knew he never married and there were no children, but I never dreamed he would leave his house and everything he owned to me. Uncle Richard lived in a quiet coastal town in NC called Calabash. There are a lot of marshes and inlets, where the fishing boats come in to unload their catch. I always thought it was such a beautiful little town with great food, nice people, beautiful weather. My uncle's place was very nice, he had a great swimming hole carved out in the inlet at the bottom of his yard. It was like an oasis compared to the rest of the marshes and inlets around. When the sun hit it just right, the rocks looked like jewels under the water. There is a huge tree at the water's edge, a swing built for two hung from a limb on the back, then ropes from different limbs where you could swing out into the water and flip, cannonball, dive or just fall off. Somehow he had lights under the water, and he hung fairy lights in the tree so we could swim at night. There is a big family sized table out there, where we would have dinner if the weather was nice. We had made quite a few local friends who would come to swim and play with us when we came to visit. Uncle Richard's house was less than a mile inland, off the beaten path down a sandy road lined with pecan trees draped with that spooky Spanish moss. It was a big two-story house with a wraparound porch, filled with rocking chairs and a couple of porch swings. It could have been the cover of one of those home magazines. My bedroom had a huge king-sized bed with a canopy, and French doors that opened up onto the roof of the porch overlooking the backyard leading to the marsh and inlets. The upstairs had three bedrooms, two baths. The master suite is where my parents slept, its master bath has this antique claw foot tub that my mom loved so much. My brother's room and my room shared a smaller bathroom that was painted that 70s robin's egg blue from roof to ceiling, even the tub and the toilet was blue, not that we really cared back then. His part of the house was downstairs, and none of us were ever allowed into it. He was very private. We even tried to sneak into his room one day when the adults went to town for groceries, and let me tell ya, he had that room locked down like Fort Knox. The porch doors were locked and tinted, all the windows were locked and the curtains were drawn shut. Unlike the rest of the house, which is open and airy with very few curtains and I rarely remember them locking the doors. I had finally arranged my schedule to take some time off and head to the NC coast. Well, I brought some work with me. I am a photographer and two of my clients who I have photographed since their engagement, are going to come here for their yearly family portrait, I just need to scout out some places to take some pictures over the next week, shouldn't be too hard, there's so much to explore here and nearby. It's the first week of January, but unseasonably warm. 
I looked at the forecast for the next two weeks and there are a few days that'll reach the 80s, which means there may be some top-down weather. I decided to drive my classic convertible 1969 VW Beetle over from Charlotte. It only took a little over four hours to get here, but I forgot how uncomfortable the seats were in this thing. 452 Richard Headway, I laughed to myself, remembering how my brothers all got the joke. It was on the last trip here, I was about 15, that my neighbor friend, Tasha, explained it to me. About how some nicknames are made from their own names. Somehow, people got dick out of Richard. Not sure how that works, but look it up, it's a real thing. The lawyer had left an envelope with the key to the house and a copy of the will in the mailbox. I pulled down the drive. There were limbs and leaves everywhere. The house doesn't seem as grand, quite a bit run down. The gutters are falling on one side all the way to the sidewalk. Most of the rocking chairs are turned over and one of the porch swings is half down. Everything looks rough on the outside, I know he was getting up in years and obviously his health was failing, but he could have hired someone. I chuckled a little to myself remembering how tight he was with his money. Maybe I was wrong, and he didn't have as much as I thought. I turn off the engine and open the door, taking a deep breath of the fresh air. As I slid from the worn leather seat, I grabbed the key from the envelope. It has some lighthouse on it, Cape Hatteras it says. Heading towards the house, I stop to rub and stretch my back. Just as I reached the porch, the exhaustion from the trip must have hit me harder and faster than I thought it would. I sat down on the top step with my back up against one of the brick columns. I leaned my head back and blinked my eyes closed for what felt like only a few seconds. I tried to open my eyes, once they were opened I wished I could have closed them. The sun was burning my eyes for one thing, but there was someone there. All I could see was the shape of a person. It feels like someone has tied me down or injected me with some kind of paralytic. I tried to put my hands up to block the sun, but I couldn't move my arms. I tried to look away but other than a quick blink at random intervals, my eyes would not avert or even squint. I couldn't speak, stand or move any part of my body. The shape was moving around on the porch. I started to hear the sound of something sliding across the floor and saw the shape pull what looked like a person onto the porch swing in front of me. The sun is finally starting to dip below the tree line and the form of the person in the swing becomes clearer. Oh my god! It's a young woman, and she is tied to the swing with this orange nylon rope. The black shape is still just that, I can't make them out. It's getting dark but there's light from the big front window cascading onto the back of the swing and the dark-haired girl tied to it. I tried to look around to see where the dark figure was, but I still can't move. I try to speak to wake the girl, whose face is becoming clearer, but nothing comes out. Just then I hear the screen door slam shut, normally I would have jumped, but, I can't freaking move. Wait. How did they get in the house? It was supposed to be locked. The key is still in my hand, I can feel the lighthouse key ring digging deep into my palm. It's completely dark out now, I heard the dark figure go back into the house and lock the door. The girl on the swing must be waking up, I can hear her muffled whimpers and failed attempts at breaking free from the ropes. The swing is moving back and forth in and out of the light, and I get glimpses of her face and it hits me where I've seen her, it's the girl who worked at the convenience store where I bought snacks and gas. I remember her name Tagreed Miracle. I asked her if that was her birth name, and she said, yep, Miracle Hope Carter. I remembered because I thought it was unusual. This has to be a dream that it makes sense. Yeah, that's it. This is a dagum dream.
Just as that thought crossed my mind, the light went off and the only thing illuminating the porch or the entire area was the full moon. Cue the wolves howling. I wanted to laugh at myself, but I can't freaking move. No way this is real. I know I am supposed to be scared, but this is a dream. It has to be. So I won't be scared, and if I could sit up straight and puff out my chest and act all brave I would. But, I can't freak move. And this has to be a dream. I mean come on. The figure didn't acknowledge me, neither has the girl on the swing. Some dark figure is going in and out of my uncle's locked house. As soon as the full moon came out wolves just start howling, really? So I must have fallen asleep and just having a very detailed dream. My eyes still won't divert from the swing. The howling seems to be getting closer and more guttural. So, yeah I'm starting to get a little bit scared. I barely watched Teen Wolf, the old cartoon ones. And it has to full daylight with my fiancé sitting beside me to watch the new ones. Bok Bok, hello, my name's Bonnie and I have an irrational fear of all things horror. Just then, I hear a wet, rumbling snort and in a flash something disfigured and hairy jumps over me and onto Miracle. The swing starts violently swinging back and forth, side to side and suddenly it breaks on one side. She looks terrified, I hear her crying out and see her face distorted in fear. I want desperately to close my eyes, but all I can do is quickly blink. The raw musky smell of the animal in front of me permeates the air, then I start to smell that irony metallic odor of blood. I hear her piercing scream, but only for a few seconds and then my eyes fail me. They wouldn't close. I had to watch as this thing devour her slender neck. Her name tag now dripping with her blood. This is really starting to not feel like a dream anymore. I smell the warm blood in this tank animal musk. I can't ever remember being able to smell in a dream before. I'm realizing this isn't a dream. I know I am next, but I can't run or even turn away. The tears are welling up in my eyes. I guess whatever has paralyzed me can't stop my tears. At least they start to blur what is happening on the swing. The miracle is dead, her body is lifeless now. The only movement is when the animal shakes her like a dog with a toy. Finally, it's finished or bored and the beast turns towards me walking on its hind legs, almost like a human but not. The heaviness of its steps is daunting in itself. But, then it just stands over me, as if I'm not there and howls at the moon like some cheesy werewolf movie cute away. It doesn't even notice me. Just then I blink. The tears hit my cheek and when I open my eyes the sun is up in the sky, blinding my eyes. My eyes squint and close, I turn my head from the sun. I try to stand and nearly fall down the steps, but I didn't care. I get to the grass and bend over, my hands on my knees and vomit the lunch I had eaten on the way here. I look down at my hand. The lighthouse keering has dug in so deep, there is a bloody gash. I gather my composure as best I can and look back up at the porch. Nothing, no one is there. The swing isn't broken definitely no pool of blood and it is surely nowhere near dark yet. How did I dream all of that in such a short time? It was like I blinked, and felt so real. I looked down at the gash in my hand, blood dripping from the tip of my pinky. I winced, probably more from the look of it than the actual pain. I grabbed a napkin from the fast food bag in my car, covered it as best I could and slammed the door. Let's try this again. I said out loud as I headed back to the house. I walked up the steps and sat one of the rockers back upright and looked at the swing to my right. Looks like just the chain was broken, an easy fix. 
I run my fingers over the weathered wood. I walk over to the one to the left of the door, the one from my dream. I tug on the chains, and they are sturdy and the wood is fine. My heart is still racing a little, that dream was insanely real. I open up the squeaky screen door and unlock the large wooden and glass front door. Even with the lack of window treatments, it was very dark inside. I am waiting for that animal to jump out at me, just the thought gives me chills. My hand finds the light switch and turns the first one on, must be the porch light the second one, for the stairs. The third one is for the foyer and the fourth is for the living room, den area that is open to the dining room and kitchen. My fears start to wane as the comfort of seeing the house looks the same as when I used to visit when I was younger. I expect is dust and cobwebs, maybe some hoarding of some kind, but there is nothing like that. It's like he could come walking around the corner any second. But, it's silent except for the ticking of his ugly cuckoo clock. The kitchen has been updated it seems no more green appliances. I open the stainless steel refrigerator expecting a stinky mess, and to my surprise, it's empty except for the wine drawer. Just as I was about to walk down the hall to finally investigate Uncle Richards's room, there is a pounding on the front door. I nearly jump out of my skin. I sneak to the door like a burglar being caught in the act. I pull back the curtain and see a nice looking guy pacing back and forth. I put the chain lock on and crack open the door. Can I help you? I asked curtly. He turned around, oh, hello I'm Jack, I live across the road and saw lights and needed to talk to Richard. Puzzled, I unlocked and opened the door, I am Bonnie, his niece. I am sorry to tell you but Uncle Richard has passed away. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. He opened the screen door. I can't stay, but will you be here during the day tomorrow so we can speak? Sure, we will be here going through things and cleaning up around the house. Saying we like I had five other people with me so this strange man wouldn't think I was alone. Please lock up tonight. He said as he let go of the screen door. There's a full moon tonight, and you know what they say about the full moon. And it's the first full moon of the year, the wolf moon. I followed him out the door. Excuse me? He keeps walking and I keep talking. Wolf moon, what in the world is that? Some old wife's tale? He looked back as he hurried down the driveway, nope it's real. Don't be surprised when you hear the wolves howling tonight. The sun was all but gone, and so was Jack. I took this chance to grab my bags and phone from the car and head back into the house. He didn't have to tell me twice to lock up, especially with the dream I had. Luckily for me, I stopped and grabbed some snacks and bottled water. And who there's wine. I head upstairs to my old room and get into some warm PJs. The bathroom hadn't changed a bit. But, the towels were soft, and he always had the best organic soaps, smelled like lilac and springtime. Then I heard it, the wolves howling. What the hell? I go to the window and pull back the curtain a little and sure enough, the moon is full and bright. Then, as if on cue, the lights go out. That's when I realized my phone is on the kitchen counter, what an idiot I am. I start to feel the wall so I can make my way down the stairs and get my phone and figure out why the power is off. I make it to the bottom step and hear rustling out on the porch, but until I have my phone and an AK-747 or a knife, there's no way I'm going anywhere near that window. I've seen the previews of too many horror movies to do that. I find the back of the couch and start easing my way to the kitchen when, bam, something hits me on the back of the head and the next thing I remember is waking up on the floor and it's morning. At some point, 
I must have pulled the throw off of the back of the couch because I was covered up. I guess something fell off the bookshelf and hit me in the head? There is a book on the floor beside me, imagine my shock when I picked it up and the title was, The Book of Werewolves, The Classic Study of Lycanthropy. I had seen my uncle with this book before, all the other books on the shelves were easy reading, photo albums and such. And looking on the shelf, there wasn't a place for this book. I don't even think this size book could have knocked me out like that. I halfway expected to reach back there and find blood, but there was none, just a good sized knot. Such relief all the way around. 6.32 AM, no more moon, no more wolves and it was getting light outside. The local pancake house opens at 7 AM and I'm starving. I run upstairs and begin to get ready and when I grab my hoodie, I spill out the contents of the envelope the lawyer gave me. It had several documents in it, one is a short note from my uncle. It read. Bonnie, this house is your touchstone, you will understand soon enough. I've always thought of you as a daughter, you are very special. Love, Uncle Richard. If you could have seen my face, all scrunched up like what the heck? Touchstone? I'll understand? A daughter? Special? Love? No clue about the first two, but daughter and love? He barely spoke to me on some trips. I mean sometimes he did but, not like a daughter. And I'm special? How? I decide to go through the rest of the papers when I get home from breakfast. I open the front door and the first thing I notice is the porch is wet like it poured the rain wet. I lock the door and start to leave and just as I am about to take my first step down, I notice the other swing is broken too now. I thought, maybe there was a storm. Though, the forecast called for clear weather all week. Just as I was turning to go, the bright neon orange rope threads caught my eye. On the armrest, there's a small amount of orange thread pressed in deep around the screw that holds the chain where she was tied. In my dream. Right? In my dream?